To you for decades, the Al Smith dinner in Manhattan has been a who's who of New York elite. And once every four years, going back decades, the event hosts the Republican and Democrat candidates for president just a few weeks before this country votes. It's usually a pretty cool moment. It was canceled in 2020 for COVID. The last time we saw the candidates trade barbs was 2016 with Trump and Hillary there. It was actually fun to see. It was good for decorum. Trump sending out some jokes, Hillary laughing. A reminder that behind all the fear mongering and brutal rhetoric in an election are just two people vying for political office and they're still people. It's usually a very humanizing event. And last night, Kamala Harris decided not to be a human and she blew it off again. A no show for a tradition that goes back to the 1940s. And her absence was felt and it was widely mocked. Comedian Jim Gaffigan emceed this event. He is a devoted liberal, a Manhattan resident, somebody one would assume auto checks the Democrat ticket in every single election. Here's what he said about Kamala not showing up. Catholics will be a key demographic in every battleground state. I'm sorry, why is Vice President Harris not here? <laughs> Consider this. This is a room full of Catholics and Jews in New York City. <laughs> this is a layup for the Democratic nominee. A layup for the Democrat nominee. Exactly. The room felt angry at a lot of times, cheated out of the experience of watching both of these candidates roast each other just a couple weeks before the election. Gaffigan was fairly even-handed in his roasting of both Trump and Kamala. To his credit, he delivered some heavy shots at his own party of choice. The media has begun discussing the <laughs> phenomena of secret Trump voters. I don't know if you've heard about this. People who publicly say they would never vote for Trump, but then when they go in the voting booth, they do. It's a small group. They're called the Biden family. <laughs> The Democrats have been telling us Trump, Trump's re-election is a threat to democracy. In fact, they were so concerned of this threat, they staged a coup, <laughs> ousted their democratically elected incumbent, and installed Kamala Harris. <laughs> yeah, pretty good jokes. When it came to the point where the audience would watch both candidates take the stage, which is just after 9 o'clock in the evening, the audience quickly realized that Kamala had time to com come up with an entire skit with a washed up SNL cast member, but for some reason couldn't make it to the actual event. To make it even worse, that skit was absolutely brutal. Check it out. Does it bother you that that Trump guy insults you all the time? Because it really bothers my friends and me. Oh, Mary Catherine, it's very important to always remember you should never let anyone tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. In the spirit of tonight's dinner, let us recommit to reaching across divides, to seek understanding and common ground. Lame, 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 lame. The reaction from the room was mostly groans when that three-minute video ended. And a reminder that this was in Manhattan. So bad that even Gaffigan noted the groans from the audience. The MC then roasted Trump before inviting him up onto the stage, as we would expect. He hit him pretty hard, actually. Although, if you watch the video, it seemed Trump didn't seem too bothered. Take a look. During the first and only debate, President Trump talked about migrants taking cats and eating them. You know, if you're keeping track at home, this is the second time grabbing a kitty has been part of a campaign issue. You know, Here's the thing that's so amazing about Donald Trump. It is impossible to not have a strong opinion about President Trump. You either think he is endearingly outspoken and brash, or you think he's a sociopath, and you'd like to be his running mate. <laughs> Some good zingers. The former president took it in stride, actually thanked Gaffigan told him he was doing a great job, the two enjoying a nice moment at the end as Gaffigan waited around to shake his hands after the speech. Funny enough, last night served, if you can believe it, as a testament to Trump's temperament, which is typically his biggest vulnerability. 
You had a dais loaded with people who absolutely despised this man, including Tish James, right over his shoulder as he talked, working to bankrupt and imprison him, an awful person. New York's governor, Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, Michael Bloomberg, Bill de Blasio, people who've been telling you for years that Trump is a dictator and a threat to democracy all around him. Trump gave a warm thank you to many people who attack him daily. Take a look. I gave him his first check from an office in Beach Haven, and uh, I was very proud of it. I don't know about it lately. Senator Gillibrand, thank you very much. Thank you very much for working hard. Governor Hochul, wherever you may be up, this is a big day, is right? Where is the governor? Good job. It's not an easy one, is it? Mayor Adams, good luck with everything. They went after you. Good luck with everything. Then came the actual good stuff, and we threw the best jokes all into a nice pile for you to enjoy. Take a listen. It's uh, really a pleasure anywhere in New York without a subpoena for my appearance. <laughs> Anytime I don't get a subpoena, I'm very happy. Look on the bright side, Chuck, considering how woke your party has become. If Kamala loses, you still have a chance to become the first woman president. <laughs> Tradition holds that I'm supposed to tell a few self-deprecating jokes this evening. So here it goes. <laughs> nope, I've got nothing. I used to think the Democrats were crazy for saying that men have periods, but then I met Tim Waltz. There's a group called White Dudes for Harris. I'm not worried about them at all because their wives and their wives' lovers are all voting for me. It was a good speech, and it was pretty funny. And aside from a hilarious speech, we again noticed something else uh, that uh, we wanted to point out, how bizarre it was. The, tre the treatment of Trump by people who tell you almost daily that he is a threat to the entire nation. We watched a long handshake some very friendly words with Kathy Hochul after Trump ended his speech. You can see right there. And then we have this video here, a four minute conversation with Chuck Schumer at the very beginning of the evening. At one point, Trump even mentioned reinstating the salt deduction after he's elected. And you can see Chuck cheering for that right there and clapping his hands together. Democrats exhibiting some very bizarre behavior while mingling with the alleged fascist who's about to take over our country and destroy it. You know, everybody's reporting the same stories, the same spin. You turn the channel, it's always the same. But not us, we're different. We report the real news, no spin, just the facts. Turn to us and you won't turn back. Tune in to Rob Schmidt tonight on Newsmax.